Welcome to this video. Today we are trying out the new Firefox web browser. It's called Quantum version 57, 64 bit. I have it up here on the screen right now and I just wanted to kind of give my first impression or first take of this new browser. Now one thing I will say about Firefox over Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or even Safari, they've always taken privacy very seriously. Uh, especially compared to Google Chrome, it is one of the more private web browsers that you can use today on the internet. Many critics have criticized Google Chrome because it's an older browser and they haven't really done any major changes to it for quite some time. However, we can see here that this is a brand new uh, Firefox that they've built from the ground up. And so hopefully this will be a new improved experience over the older version of Firefox. Now, right before I updated, I did take a screenshot of the old Firefox. It's up here on the screen right now, just so we could kind of have a visual to compare as far as what they've changed with the layout and the visual overall look of Quantum. And so if I go back to the new Firefox, you can see that it is, it is quite different. The menu especially has been changed. And the overall layout kind of reminds me of Microsoft Edge. I think it might have to do a lot with the square tabs up at the top. In fact, if I open up Microsoft Edge, it does kind of have a similar feel. If I put them side by side, and we'll even go to the new tab setting here, you can see that it does kind of have a similar look. But overall, it is, I think, an improvement over the previous layout of uh, Firefox. Now if we take a look at the top left corner we do have the back and forward refresh and home buttons just like Microsoft Edge or even Google Chrome it is the same and then going to the right we still have the address bar and there is the reader view uh, located right there next to the address bar and then we have some additional options. Now a lot of these options right here if I open up the screenshot of the previous version a lot of those are these options right here. So that's kind of the same location. And then we've, of course, got the bookmarks, our favorite, the star. And then we still have this search box, which is a little bit redundant because the address bar does searches and Edge and Chrome don't still have this search box. They just use the address bar, which is also a search box. So it's a little redundant, but I guess they still like having it there. Going to the right, we have additional options. Now here is a little bit of redundancy because these options are also over here but I'm sure some customization can change that and then looks like we have this sidebar specifically for bookmarks and other things as well and then last we have the menu button to open up the menu. Now looking here at the menu we can see we have some of the options that look familiar such as being able to sign into sync which is something you definitely want to do if Firefox is your browser. So you can sync your settings across different devices. New window, private window, and some of the additional options, again, look familiar from previous version and other browsers. We have the library. From here, you can manage your add-ons. And let's go ahead and click on the options. And we can see here, these options look pretty familiar to what we had in the previous version and it looks like they have the most important stuff here up at the top. Things that people are going to be looking for such as being able to set Chrome as your default, what happens when Firefox starts, and right here is where you can change what your home page is if you would like to. You just type it in there. Uh, it looks like we can manage our search settings over here to the left and this is actually a nice feature right here. We can actually get rid of this extra search box. Now this is something that's been long overdue. I'm going to go ahead and select that top option because there's really no point in having that search box because this address bar is a search box. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. We can also change our default browser here from this list. For those of you wanting to increase privacy, use DuckDuckGo. Otherwise, you can use Google, Yahoo, or Bing, but really you know, you should explore using DuckDuckGo because it does increase your privacy. Uh, and then we can go down if we need to remove, you know, something off of our search engines, such as Wikipedia. If we want to get rid of that, we can go ahead and do so. And then moving on, if we go over here to privacy and security, 
We can manage our passwords and logins. I do recommend that you use a master password to increase uh, privacy and security. We can change our history settings. So just some additional options here. Now with tracking, this is kind of nice. You do have some tracking options that you can set as far as you know additional security and privacy options. So you really do want to go through all of these. Now this one right here, if you want to minimize the amount of data that Firefox or Mozilla collects on you, uncheck the boxes. And then last, if we go over here to the Firefox account, this is where you can manage your account that syncs your uh, setting and information across different devices in the Firefox web browser. Now let's go up here back to the menu and let's go down to customization. And now this is kind of nice. This is for those of you who have used Safari, this is going to look a little familiar. But basically what you can do here is find something that you need or want. For example, we could add the options right up here on the uh, on the bar here and we can probably rearrange things if we want to as well yep it looks like we can rearrange the downloads if we want the downloads to be over here next to the home button we could do that and so really you could put anything you want up here though it's probably best to keep it simple we could also just put a quick icon for a new private window there you know however we want and then if we want to undo all of this and just get back to the default, there is a default button down here in the bottom right corner. I just hit that, changes everything back to the way it was, and restores it to default. Now if we go over here to the bottom left corner, there are some additional options. We can add the title bar if we really want it there. We just check that box. Uh, we can select what toolbars show up. There's the menu bar bookmarks toolbar we can add as well but I'm gonna go ahead and remove both of those uh, off of mine and we can also select themes if we want to do more of a dark there's a light there's the default we can also change the overall look of the browser itself if you want to get more themes there's a button right there to do so and so overall there's a lot more customization options with quantum than the previous versions of Firefox. So this overall is kind of nice to be able to make it your own the way that you want it and the way that it best works for you. Now, additionally, one thing that the new browser is advertising is hopefully it's a better overall experience as far as performance. So I'm here on Yahoo, which is kind of an intensive website. And I opened up some additional tabs there, but I'm just gonna kind of see you know, how well it does here. I'm just gonna kind of click on some random links here on Yahoo and see how it does. I mean, it's not terrible. Um, you know, this is definitely manageable. Some of you, you know, you may have different results depending on your internet speed. So this, this kind of test is always kind of difficult to compare because everyone has different internet speeds as well as the actual hardware in your computer is going to affect it to some degree as well. Um, but overall, it, it seems to be performing well. It's kind of interesting they have a dot up here for the loading instead of a spinning circle. So that's something that's a little more original. But overall, this is something that, as far as performance, it's going to depend on what you use your browser for, the hardware in your computer, as well as your internet speed and connection. So the results may differ from computer to computer or from user to user. Overall, it is nice to see that Mozilla has made some changes to their browser and working to make it more up to date, more competitive. And like I've said a couple times already, if you're looking to increase privacy, Firefox is a good option to go with, especially over Google Chrome. Google Chrome's great as far as performance, but everything you do in that browser is transmitted back to Google. I know Google will say that it's all anonymous, but it really comes down to how much do you trust them and how much do you trust them to keep that information anonymous. Uh, Microsoft does it with Edge. Apple, to a degree, does it with Safari. You know, even Mozilla does it to a degree. As far as the overall layout, I do like it. It may be a little bit of an adjustment for some, but the thing I like the most is the customization options. And so that way, depending on you, the user, you can really make it work for you the way that you want it. Completely change the layout, customize the look. That's really a nice option to have as far as you know the way you use your browser 
That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, please put them down below in the notes and I will respond as quickly as possible. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video.